Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break podcast. Today we want to talk about a pot uh, about dropshipping. Now dropshipping have been declared dead a million times, but it is not. With me on the show today, I have Travis Marier. He is the CEO of FlexPoint.com, a dropship and distributed order management platform built for connected commerce. Travis has been in the e-commerce industry for over 10 years, leading multiple software and service companies. He is an advocate of the distribution fulfillment model and passionate about empowering merchants to compete in a rapidly evolving retail industry. So let's dive into the topic of dropshipping. Hey, Travis, how are you today? Hey, good. Thanks for having me. Great to have you on the show. Travis, dropshipping, why? Yeah, I mean, uh, one, it's it's an amazing uh, fulfillment model. You know, there's been a lot of different um, approaches to it as far as there's, uh, you know, kind of the China, the U.S., there's the internal kind of U.S.-based approach. There's a lot of different, uh, you know, basically ideas about it out there. I think, you know, the big thing to think about when it comes to dropship is it sounds so great at the surface because there is a lot of efficiencies in the actual model, if it's done right. Um, you know, in general, it's been tough to, you know, get it going because there's a lot of integration heavy kind of uh, work that is involved. But in general, right now, uh, dropshipping is really picking back up. Um, and I'm not talking about quit your side job uh, or start a side job, quit your nine to five, kind of that, the dropshipping where it's this um, live on an island kind of scenario. Uh, we deal mostly in dropshipping where it's a fulfillment model for an established retailer or someone that has an audience in general, maybe not a retailer, but an influencer, whatever it might be, but has an audience, has a differentiated kind of brand um, for for that type of company, uh, it can make a ton of sense. And, um, you know, right now it's it's some of the best time to start dropshipping. You've got, you know, direct consumer brands that are great that have their on a Shopify store, on a big commerce store, wherever it might be that you can easily plug in with, you know, systems like, like whether it's Zapier or like an order manager system built for dropship, like ourselves, FlexPoint, um, you know, whatever it might be, you can easily kind of connect to a, a partner network of dropshippers. And so right now it's really been interesting to see uh, the new players getting into the space because, it doesn't require as much technical overhead as it as it has in the past, so it's been interesting to kind of see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for clarifying. We're not talking about what was a hype a few years ago, um, the coverage overnight with AliExpress dropshipping. These things and this kind of dropshipping is definitely nothing that I would recommend. But dropshipping as a business model has been around for a very long, very long time, and I agree hundred percent with you. Moving um, the market, moving to DTC dropshipping done the right way, and we will dive into this now, um, is still a great business concept. Now, it can become relatively complex if you're running a store, you have um, different suppliers, um, different technology platforms. And I understand you at FlexPoint, you're helping in basically clearing this up, create clarity and helping with the processes. Tell me a little bit about the complexities behind running a dropshipping business. Sure. Yeah, let's say uh, say you're you're typically just shipping something out of your warehouse, right? You're a DTC brand or a traditional retailer that you've had a brick and mortar or your own warehouse. Um, you're used to physically having these items and maybe just a small catalog because you're not building out a large catalog. It's it's usually uh, price prohibitive to do that. Um, but when you start drop shipping, a lot of times you're you're dealing with a larger catalog because you can because you don't have to own the inventory and you don't actually own it, so you don't physically have it. So that means things like images, titles, descriptions, like how do you actually decide what to call it, how to describe it, how to get the imagery, um, just getting the products up onto your website in mass, you know, usually, like I said, it's more than just one or two that you're, you're adding, at least in our model, uh, in the traditional retail model, you know, it's, it's kind of can be, um, can be difficult. So you're dealing with whether it's a file or an integration need there and getting it up, categorizing it properly. So to start, that's, that's a piece of it. Um, once you get your product catalog onto your website, you then need to sync inventory. So, you know, working with uh, your vendors to understand where do they maintain their accurate quantities. So you don't sell something they don't have in their warehouse um, that they cannot ship for you. So, you know, as I was saying earlier, you need to build a good brand. It's not AliExpress just flipping uh, customers, never having them come back. You need to be still building a good brand. And with that, you need to have a good fulfillment experience. And so with that, you, you got to make sure that you're not selling things that are out of stock uh, and you're fulfilling orders when people buy them on your website to build your brand. Onboarding vendors in general uh, is something that you should be thinking about. And you need systems like whether it's a FlexPoint or any kind of um, software out there that helps you kind of onboard these vendors to 
get the catalog in, to sync the inventory, to manage how many vendors you have in a queue, how many that you you know already signed agreements with, um, how many that you've integrated with. Um, so just that whole piece of it. That's that's all just getting started, right? There's some complexity there, and why there's software out there that focuses just on that piece. Um, and so once you get going, that's you get your vendors up, you're going, you start getting orders in. You do need to be thinking about, okay, an order comes in, it has one of my branded items on it, and it also has a dropship item on it. You know, how do I split that off uh, appropriately? And then how do I, um, you know, make sure that experience is good, whether it's coming in two boxes or whether you're bringing it into your own warehouse first, what we call cross docking and bringing that in first and then setting it all together. If you have high enough margins, it can make sense to do that in some industries. Um, so it's thinking about those complexities and how you want to handle them. Uh, and, and one of the most complex areas that we handle is in the retail world where you might already be buying wholesale from brands. Say uh, I'm an outdoors company and you know I sell fishing rods and I'm currently buying those wholesale. I'm star star uh, storing my whole warehouse and I'm setting them out. If I also dropping that exact same fishing rod, how do I how do I map that across multiple systems to say this fishing rod's in my warehouse, this one's also in another warehouse. Um, how do I get that up to my site as one product listing with an accurate quantity across those two separate warehouses? And one I don't own, right? It's a drop shipper. And when an order comes in, sure, maybe it's as simple enough as saying, I just want to always fulfill my warehouse. And then if it's out of stock, go over to uh, the drop shipper and fulfill it there. But we have clients that say, you know what? No, if it's in California, fulfill it directly from the dropship because I can't fulfill it for the same cost, right? Or I can't get there in quick enough time or if it's international. So there's all those complexities where systems like FlexPoint kind of come in. We, what we call product overlap, where you have the exact same product in multiple uh, warehouses, third party and first party. Um, so it's really just a game of data integration, data management, whether it's inventory product or order data. Mm hmm it was a great overview of what basically dropshipping the different kind of scenarios that you can work with um, i like that so now once you have found a, a vendor or supplier for the products that you want to sell in your store um, obviously they all have different technology platforms tell me a little bit about the integration of whatever they can provide when it comes to the data exchange to your platform that might be shopify that might be big commerce wherever you're on yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's all about integration, right? And that's that's the main piece um, when you're working with a dropshipper. To be able to have that good experience, you need to have your two systems talking. And traditionally, EDI was the way you integrated via dropshipping. And for those that are not familiar with EDI, electronic, electronic data interchange, it was uh, built to replace the fax. That's how old it is. Um, and it was literally just this non-human readable files that were translated. Um, interesting enough, it's still used by most of the large players, Walmart, Amazon, Target, um, all the big retailers still a lot of times require EDI uh, because they've built their whole system infrastructure around it. Uh, but it's very tough to implement. It's very fragile. It's not a standard like it might sound. It can differ from retailer to retailer. It's very time consuming to set up. So at the very base level, that's how people started integrating from a retailer to a supplier. And then, you know, obviously moving on to integrating dropship as well between that retailer and that supplier. Um, still around today, but that's kind of at the base level, the one you want to avoid. Three months setups, the costly, things like that. Um, it slowly evolved to, and you see this today a lot, where there's CSV files that are hosted on like a Dropbox location or an FTP uh, to provide live inventory. And there's custom scripts written that, you know, a, a, a lot of entry level developers can write a script to update a file. Um, so it made things a little bit easier. They're human readable. It simplified kind of that EDI process of transferring files, but still wasn't great. Uh, we saw the REST API really kind of bring things forward a lot further in that, you know, uh, it's with good docu documentation, it's a very efficient way to translate data back and forth between two systems. And so the rise of the API has really kind of been a game changer for, um, for just kind of integration as a whole but it still requires a developer and you need kind of a, a good developer to make sure that they can properly lead the, read the documentation, integrate, you know, deal with rate limiting, deal with, um, you know, pagination, things like that. So, uh, you know, that was, that was good, but it still required a developer. Where we're at now and why I'm so excited about dropship and the integration between partners and commerce is that we've got these connectors that say, you don't have to be a developer. We've already 
built all these pre-built integrations to every open API system that is out there. Shopify, big commerce, you know, all, all the, any new software has to be rolled out has an API in most cases. And so, you know, everyone probably on your podcast a good bit probably know about Zapier, right? And that's a great example of an iPaaS an integration platform as a service that helps you just kind of integrate um, more commerce focused ones like Soligo out there and um, Alloy and things like that. You know, we, what we did with Flexpoint is because we're focused on dropship, we built an order and inventory management system with an iPaaS built in. So now when it comes to integrating your, your vendor who's on Shopify, you just have them install the Shopify app and they start, you automatically are pulling your product data, automatically syncing inventory, automatically sending orders and tracking information back and forth. No developer, no um, custom code for those that are on Shopify, on big commerce. We even have them with open source platforms like Magento and WooCommerce, um, things like that. So, you know, it, what the big hurdle was uh, when integrating with dropship suppliers was how do we integrate? Who's going to write it? Do I have a developer? Do I not have a developer? How do I deal with EDI? Now, today it's I'm on Shopify, you're on Shopify. I'm on big commerce, you're on Magento. Doesn't matter. Just use a system like Flexpoint or any other kind of iPass out there to easily connect with your uh, your your partners essentially and start working together. Okay, no, makes perfect sense. And obviously, that helps a lot. Um, I remember the times dealing with CSV files, and it was a pain in the neck. Uh, there were so many errors in there, so I, this just was not a good experience. Now, when you work with a partner on the other side, and you only want to source, I don't know, certain product ranges and um, synchronizing the stock and all of that. Uh, how do you keep control from your side that you really only source the products that you want to have and so on? Yeah, that's a great question. And I can tell you've got experience in here, right? Just be able to dive in there uh, or at least uh, have heard of, you know, the complexities there. So what we do with Flexpoint specifically, um, because we are in that, the business of building out a larger catalog, not the one SKU kind of dropship AliExpress thing, but like building a larger catalog to to bolster your brand online and to, you know, build an experience on your on your website. So you're dealing with a lot of products that are available to you. We have a we have two screens, really three, but two that main uh, mainly matter, where you can see the entire product feed. So whether you're integrated via CSV file or EDI or an API, like still has to happen for some of your vendors that require it, or you connect it to a Shopify store, a Magento store, whatever it might be, all those products are brought into a single screen. And um, from there, you can look through that, search through that. We built specifically the, the IMS and the PIM tooling within our system to say, here's all that's available to you, right? With rich imagery and titles and descriptions and custom fields and attributes that you can easily filter. And then you can select those products in our user interface and say, list that to Amazon, list that to Shopify, list that to both Amazon, Shopify, Walmart, and my other big commerce store. So we kind of give you those screens to kind of manage them in, in one spot. Okay, that sounds like an amazing feature, um, something that should make merchants' life much, much easier. Now, when it comes to um, getting the information after the purchase and after the delivery, so we're talking about shipping um, details, tracking info, and so on and so forth, is that also something that you pull from the vendor and basically forward to the customer? We do, and that has been, I, I believe... You know, that's a big piece of the efficiency that we add is uh, we have a lot of customers saying we receive an order. We a lot of times have to manually send the order to um, our vendor, right? And we kind of help with that piece. But the, the biggest one was always, okay, I might be able to automate like an email PO or something, but getting the tracking back up to my store was always tough. So um, yes, we do uh, help in that full cycle, not only from what we call left to right is getting the products up, listed and synced. And then right to left, which is the orders down to your vendor and then back up the shipping tracking to your, your customer. And, you know, nowadays um, we'll update the order status and, and uh, big commerce and Shopify specifically, I can think off the top of my head, we'll, we'll push the tracking up, we'll mark the status as shipped. And then all that normal communication will come from your Shopify store with your branding, with all of your, um, you know, proper kind of messaging that you've had for any other order. Mm hmm do you have any other kind of integrations that are sort of exotic when it comes to running a store for, I don't know, specific industries or niche? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. So, um, you know, over the years, we have built out, we've had, there's a lot of integrations that are not as plug and play because the the distributor, the vendor, the brand, whoever it might be, has a pre-built system that, that requires a custom integration. And so 
you know, on top of being an order and inventory management system, we have a full integration team. We have, uh, you know, it was a dozen developers constantly working on integration. So we have about 194, 95, I think is where we're at right now. Um, pre-built integrations to the large distributors in the auto parts space and the furniture space. And, you know, um, there's a ton of other industries that we've got even in kind of, um, yeah, a, a ton of different industries that we serve where uh, we have plug and play uh, distributors built into our system where you don't have to go hire a developer and they're ready to go kind of one click process of loading their products in. Okay. Now, you're obviously talking to a lot of vendors out there. Do you see some specific trends or industries where dropshipping is really picking up right now compared to, I don't know, a, a year or two years ago? Yeah, I, that's you know, I think traditionally it's been big in those those markets I mentioned, the industries that, you know, automotive, even in the firearm, adult space, furniture, where, you know, there's these big distributors that exist that have pre-built feeds and using connect. I will say that dropship is becoming more and more popular in this new uh, influencer ecosystem where we have people on TikTok and Instagram and things like that, where, you know, even though apparel there's high return rates and there's, um, you know, uh, sizing issues and, and things like that uh, and less margin in a lot of cases, uh, if you have an audience and you don't, and you're not a traditional retailer, you're not used to commerce, dropship can be a quick, easy way to get going. And so I think these little niche markets uh, if that, that influencers can tap into uh, are starting to open up um, opportunities for dropship. Like uh, I heard of, uh, you know, my, uh, there's a local guy here that has like a rubber stamp company from, from back in the day, uh, we, you know, rubber stamps for your name and things like that, where he's got one influencer out of nowhere just showed up and starts sending them, you know, dozens of orders a day. They get a couple hundred in like big days, whatever it might be. Um, where he would have never expected that uh, as their business has pivoted to something else completely, but he's getting these orders that someone tapped into this weird niche market uh, on TikTok and now he's getting dropship orders from. So I, I think if anything, we're seeing more of uh, a distributed kind of approach to all these little uh, markets you can tap into because of the influencer economy. Okay, that's a very interesting insight. How does the onboarding process um, look like with FlexPoint? What's the timeline there? Yeah, with us, uh, it could be very quick, uh, depending on the complexity. I mean, we've, I would say you can be up. We've had people uh, sending orders within a couple of days, three to four days. Um, we've also, you know, had larger invitations where you're bringing on 10, 15, 20 vendors is kind of what you want to have on it before you go live. And so that can be like a 90, even to 120 day implementation. If you're bringing on catalogs, you're commuting with vendors, um, you know, that's so that's kind of what we do see. I'd see on average... You know, we're looking from like a 30 day to 90 day experience, um, getting up and going. If you are an established retailer with an established store and you have multiple vendors you want to bring on board, you know, there's a project management piece to it. Okay. That brings me to the question. Who's your perfect customer? Yeah. Our perfect customer for, uh, FlexPoint is, you know, a, a retailer that has established vendor network, um, that is, is looking to automate more of their business that they do today manually. Ideally, they're doing you know at least three million to five million dollars uh, GMV annually. Um, you know, it shows that they've kind of got uh, an established business and and they kind of need you know have got past the manual side of things. Um, so you know SMB for sure, but definitely we're leaning toward mid market. But anyone that has a dropship component or wants to add a dropship component um, to to automate more of what they're doing already online. We have another brand uh, that's a little bit more SMB focused, inventorysource.com. That, um, you know, that's really anyone that's just getting up, getting going. Uh, you can be live in the matter of a couple hours by integrating with that pre-built network I mentioned. Um, that kind of focus is there where FlexPoint is really looking for the more established retailer um, looking to automate what they're doing manually. Okay. Give me a bit of an oversight on the uh, uh, overview on the pricing structure. How does that work? Yeah, uh, pricing structure, you know, we're roughly $800 a month. Um, a lot of times we are looking for annual contracts and, uh, you know, annual payments. Um, but we do have options to go down the monthly when it makes sense. Right now, our, our team today mostly kind of manages the kind of the sales uh, pricing and things like that. Um, however, we do have kind of a light version of our app coming out where uh, it's going to go back to kind of that 
you know, you can buy it on the website, roughly 700, 600, 700 dollars a month um, will be kind of that price point. But uh, yeah, that's that's how it looks today. And then, you know, like I said, because Inventory Source is our sister company, very similar, a little more SMB, that's at $99 a month. Um, FlexPoint is really for that more serious retailer. Yeah. I mean, just taking into consideration how much time it saves you and probably um, the level is very low compared to do it manually. Um, that's that's a no-brainer. Um, before we come to the end of the coffee break today, is there anything that you want to share with the listeners that we haven't covered yet? Um. I think I just, uh, as an advocate of the dropshipping model, I think everyone has their preconceived notions of it because of uh, a YouTube video they've seen or an experience they've had. You know, I always like to remind people that it's, um, you know, it is it is a, a very powerful model if used correctly. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's one of those things to, I'd say, keep, uh, keep your eye out for in the future because, um, as, as, as I mentioned, as it's easier and easier for partners to work together, uh, I think you're going to see it more and more. And then at the same time, never realize it's happening as well. Um, so if you're in the know and you're, you're partnering, you're going to see it from from that perspective. But I think it's become more and more seamless um, and you're going to receive a package that was drop shipped that you had no idea was drop shipped. So I think that's it's really exciting for us to see that happen. Yeah, we're on the same page there. If it's done professionally and uh, with the right tools, it's, it's, it's a great experience for everyone. Cool. Where can people find out more about you guys? Yeah, just flexpoint.com. It is F L X, no E. So F L X P O I N T dot com. Um, you can check us out there. Uh, we have a, a team, you know, ready to kind of talk you through it, um, live chat, all that kind of stuff as well. Um, so happy to talk you through there. Uh, I'm always happy to engage with you on LinkedIn. You can find me, Travis Marier, M A R I E A, as well. Well, I will put the links in the show notes as always, then you just want to click away. Travis, thanks so much for giving us an overview of what's happening right now in dropshipping. And I hope a lot of listeners will check your website out. And I think it's a great system to make your life easier. Thanks so much. Awesome. Thanks, Klaus. Hey, Klaus here. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Before we wrap things up, I've got a couple of important points to share. Firstly, if you have enjoyed today's episode and want to support the show, here's a simple way to do it. Help me out with that algorithm magic by liking, commenting, and subscribing on your favorite podcast app. And if you're feeling extra generous, leaving a rating would be great. Your support helps me bringing more impactful guests on the show, and it makes it easier for others to discover the podcast. Secondly, I want to talk about to all your business owners out there. Here's a question. Are you tired of juggling everything in your business while struggling with your marketing tasks? Fed up with hit and miss experiences of hiring freelancers or agencies that don't quite get your vision? But perhaps you're not ready to commit to a full-time in-house marketer just yet. Well, I've got a solution for you. Introducing our fractional marketing team. My team and I provide top-notch experienced marketing professionals to become an extension of your business. Not only will they save you up to 50% on cost compared to traditional hires, but they also take care of all this time-consuming, repetitive and complex marketing tasks that have been holding you back. And this way, you can concentrate on what truly matters, the core of your business. To learn more about how we can help you to scale up your online sales with a fractional team member, head over to our website, smart-ecommerce-marketing.com or reach out to me directly and I'll get you the details. You will find the links in the show notes. Thanks for being a part of our podcast community and remember your support means the world to me. Until next time, see you then.